Hello, everyone. This is Two Debate on it. I caught you off guard, didn't I, Dirk? On this one. Well, why? Hello. <laughs> why Hi. would you call ca you? Ca catch me off guard? I'm because I'm, you look at me as if like, oh, we're ready to start. <laughs> Unusual, isn't it? Like, I just, I just go. I'm like, I'm exhausted. I've been like up since what? Oh God, I, I'm not a morning person. I've been up since first meeting is eight o'clock in the morning, and it's eight p.m. here. Yeah, it's been 12 hours, nonstop. Ooh. So is this your, yes. are you preparing to explain why you're going to lose this debate? Because no, uh, I'm just I, explaining I mean, why. Okay, I'm so I compensate. I'm explaining why I'm dressed with an Indonesian dress because I'm calling you once again from Jakarta and I'm wearing this beautiful Indonesian I, I like how you dress up dress. for me for the debates. That's really, no, really I, good, dressed up to the occasion. I, I know, right? It's uh, to impress you, like like this. I'm not I'm not very fashionable. I'm not very much into the fashion design and dressing up things and whatever. But this piece I like. It was uh, it was a gift, so I like I like it, and uh, and it's a good opportunity also to take selfies because obviously I never take selfies. Otherwise, I, I'm only wearing Google shirts, and hopefully these kind of selfies will not be banned. Wow, what a wonderful transition. You did not see it coming. I like how you roll your eyes every time I make a, such a horrible, terrible, miserable transition into the debate. Yeah, you can do better, actually. I, I know you what? can do better. <laughs> you, in the past, it used to have more artful transitions. Like, uh, than really? This. Yeah. Huh. Mm. This was a little mm, bit, okay. you know, it felt a, a tiny wee bit forced. Yeah, because none of the other transitions were ever forced, right? That's kind of the only one that stands out as being forced. What about your T-shirt? Tell us more about your T-shirt for those who cannot see but can listen to you, can hear you. Oh, yeah, Sky it's Walker. related to another debate we had. So maybe... Land uh, speed service and repairs. Is this Star Wars? Exactly. Oh, I don't... Hey, I, I only know Skywalker, but the... Oh, and Suns, I cannot see. I did not see the below thing. Okay. I guess that makes sense now. And Sun, yeah, of course. And X-34 is, I guess, uh, the weapon? No, X-34-7? It's the yeah, glider, I think. It's a, oh. it's a shirt. I, I, I cannot really read it myself because I wear the thing right now, but it's a, a fun shirt in a Star Wars theme. Looks like a, a shirt you would get at a, I don't know, a car shop or something um, where it says, uh, we fix your... In that case, a, glider. Yeah. Is there any story behind that t-shirt? Is it a gift? Is something you bought? Something? Yeah, my wife bought me a stack of nerdy t-shirts, and that was one of them. <laughs> story ends. <laughs> so she just. <laughs> so, she, so one day for birthday or Christmas, only just came out here. Here are all your t-shirts. Uh, it what, was what indeed it was indeed a birthday uh, gift, and it was okay. uh, I don't know five or six nerdy t-shirts. So it was like a okay. whole collection of gifts, and and uh, those nerdy t-shirts included some funny t-shirts about coffee, then this t-shirt about uh, uh, Star Wars, another one about um, Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Um, so yeah. Uh, it's a collection of shirts and that's one of them so hang on tight to actually know the motion if if you're listening to this well obviously you're listening because otherwise you would not be hearing what i'm saying so anyway, uh, oh, oh logic, speaking to myself logic. now uh, uh, all right uh anyway I'm, I'm not one to take selfies actually i don't i'm not very much into selfies like taking a photo of myself it kind of it kind of it's a bit odd to me maybe i'm not part of the correct generation yeah it's an age I thing you think what about yeah. your kids um, they take selfies? My kids take selfies, yeah. Um, and I started taking selfies because we we sent each other through our family group pictures where where we are and what we do, and that's like that's where the selfie thing kind of starts. You mean like like if if your wife is in in, in this in the living room, she sends you a picture, so she, you know where she is, and you say, "Hey, I'm actually in the kitchen." Yeah, yeah that, that's exactly what we do. Yeah, and Actually, then then I, she says, I don't know, I don't have then, then she kids, sends me a picture you know. of herself pointing at an empty coffee cup to tell me that I need to serve oh, her fresh clever, coffee. Nice. Right, that's how we do it. Ooh, Ooh. Okay, that's technology for you. Yes, mm. yes, yes. Okay, interesting. 
But yeah, I'm not a big selfie you? taker as well. And as we can, uh, as our listeners can tell from that uh, little conversation we just had, we have actually no idea when and why and how we should do <laughs> selfies, right? <laughs> and I guess that's a perfectly logical reason why we should debate about selfies, isn't it? <laughs> have you visited the the Holocaust Memorial in Ber in Berlin, right? I did, yeah. I, I've seen a few Holocaust Memorial. I've never been at any of the concentration camps, though. There are, there are a couple of concentration camps that are dedicated uh, memory sites, and um, I've never been in one of these. But the the Holocaust Memorial in, in Berlin, I visited, and it's very How impressive. How did you find it? Impressive? You find yes. it impressive? It is, okay. it is a weird, it's a weird uh, memorial. From the outside, maybe you want looks... to describe it because maybe some people have not seen it. I, I I've seen pictures of it, but describe it because it's quite unusual. Yeah, so it's like a really really big, big place where where there are concrete blocks um, scattered around, and you can you can walk between those those blocks of cement, and on the on the corner of that place, those blocks are like like the height. You can basically sit on them. They are not very high, so but you different can. Heights, they right? are different they, heights. They're different heights. Yeah, of concrete. Yes, and uh, when you walk in there, you kind of uh, they they are higher than you are actually when you walk between them. So you kind of lose sight of your surroundings, and um, they they symbolize. The, huh? I was about to ask you, what's the symbolism behind these blocks of concrete? Yeah, it, it kind of. Um, I do think the, the 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 blocks of concrete itself symbolize the 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 people that died in the Holocaust and through uh, the net throughout the Third Reich. Um, it's also that, um, as far as I understood, I'm not an expert in in it, but I do think um, in those concrete blocks there are to some uh, in some of them are remains of uh, people that died during the holocaust like little boxes with uh, memory memorabilia and things like that and uh, there are a couple of things first off you your your feeling change when you walk through it so you um, when it's rather playful on the outside the further uh, inside you get the more um, let's say pressing it is for you so it's you 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 start feeling a little bit claustrophobic in there and yeah it's, uh, since there are since those those blocks kind of represent people um it it has the, f the effect that you start uh, reflecting on it at the same time it's part of the cityscape it's a very urban uh um, place actually and it's a very unique place it's not not your everyday memorial place yeah it's also Obviously, it should. Uh, it, it tries to look a little bit like tombstones as well. So th those blocks are very, mm. very clean. It's not like uh, fancy blocks. It's a very clean design, but uh, they they symbolize tombstones it's, uh, to some extent as well. And they are nameless, as are many of the dead people in in the Holocaust as well. Um, so all of these these elements and many more, I have no idea about. I never got an official guide through that um, come to play. How much does it cost to visit the memorial? Do you remember? Do you know, or is it free? Oh, I don't know. Uh, so, so to visit it? No, you can just walk yeah. in. It's it's part okay, of the, okay. the general city. You can just you don't have to right, pay. So, anything. if you're in Berlin, or if uh, you're visiting Berlin, and anyone can actually go there for free, right? Yes, yes, yes. All right, that's good to know. All right. Well, actually, I mean, you you thank you for the explanation. You show how it's uh, heavy with symbols and uh, how it makes you think, and especially. If there are remains uh, in the concrete blocks, I guess this this makes it even more uh, questionable uh, whether it's suitable to take some kind of photos. And we don't we don't talk about selfies today, so photos you take of yourself, um, and in particular. So let's talk about the debate motion. Yeah, we we actually we actually go one step further in the motion. So if if your listeners wonder right now, what has all of this Holocaust talk to do with? Uh, with uh, very, uh, what we're going to debate today. Our motion today is about another memorial place, if you will, a place of memory, uh, which is the Auschwitz concentration camp. So the, the Nazis, they had a, a number of so-called concentration camps, places where they, they uh, locked up people, not only Jews, by the way, also people of certain religions, um, also uh, homosexuals. homosexuals. And they for, uh, it, many of them were actually places of forced labor. 
So they were basically like like prisons, but with uh, um, forced labor camps. And especially in the second half of the World War, uh, those places often became more or less, I, I don't know, the word that comes to my mind always is uh, slaughterhouses. Because basically what they did were they brought people to those concentration camps, made them made them work uh, as hard as they could and those who didn't die from the from the from the work were then systematically killed in those those places and in Auschwitz in particular more than a million people more than a million yeah. were killed just exactly. to uh, re and remind our listeners of the scale of what we're talking about Yes, and the the motion we have is because, of course, places like Auschwitz are destinations for school classes. Uh, people go there to visit them um, sometimes because they have a family that died in the Holocaust, but uh, others just to to uh, experience a place of history and uh, have a bit of a wake up call as to what things lead to. But in today's selfie culture, you see a lot of people actually making pictures there, selfies, sometimes doing silly things for, for the laugh on Instagram. And that is what sparked our motion today, which is uh, taking selfies at Auschwitz should be banned. So, so we put Auschwitz, but, uh, and we can talk about Auschwitz specifically, but the, the reason why I, I made you talk about Berlin is, in general, right, the, the debate goes maybe further than that, even the specific in the, in the motion title. Uh, I'm not going to go and talk about other memorial sites, but in general, the same principle, it, could be applicable to other sites with a, a lot of, uh, I guess, strong memories uh, connected to people dying and, and people dying from recent generations, like people who are listening to this could have grandparents who have died there. If you go to Cambodia and you visit the killing fields, for instance, probably it's a similar, yeah. similar thing. I'm not sure if really the Holocaust Memorial in Berlin is on the same line like Auschwitz, given that... Auschwitz really was a place where it happened, whereas the memorial is a, a place that is artificially created to memorize Fair it. Enough. But uh, anyway, it's it's probably uh, a related debate. Let's put it that way. Yeah. All right. So uh, as usual, we flipped a coin to decide who will be for and against. You will be for. You'll be in favor of banning these kind of photographs, selfies at Auschwitz, and I will be against it. I will try to show that there is. Uh, a reason why selfies like those can actually uh, still be okay. You got two minutes to convince me. Okay, let's do this. Dirk goes first and argues for the motion. I have multiple reasons why it should be banned, um, but I'm doing something that's probably stupid in terms of debating tactics. I give you my strongest reasons right up front in my first segment. And uh, I start with scale before I really give you the reason. The average American knows about 600 people. There are studies that basically show that number even grew the past couple of years um, due to social media and everything. 600 people. Now picture this crowd, 600 Got it in your mind? Cool. Every one of them knows 600 people as well. Try to imagine that crowd. For those slow in math, that is about 360,000 people. That's roughly the population of New Orleans. That's just a quarter of the number of the people that have been killed in Auschwitz. New Orleans times four. So we talk about, well, more something like Atlanta or Dallas. Just being killed in a systematic way, gassed in chambers. So that's really, really a terrible death and uh, about the worst that p humans can do to humans. Now, why does that matter? Because death and being killed is about the most intimate and scary moment of any human being. And Auschwitz, more than any other place, is a symbol of that. Taking a selfie at that place, maybe even in a funny pose, is tasteless, to say the least. It demonstrates a lack of dignity and respect. Imagine someone taking a selfie, even a fun selfie, on your mother's grave or on your grandmother's grave if your mother is still around, which I hope, or any relative for that matter. That is literally what people do when they take selfies in Auschwitz. 
Only in Auschwitz, they do it on an even more ignorant level because some people that have strong feelings and maybe lost relatives in Auschwitz will, may be around and may even be seeing you while you do those selfies or see the pictures. So it's a lack of dignity and respect towards those who died and those who survived, which is exactly why I would ban it. And now on to Sebastian. Let's hear his argument. Dirk, you and I, we're too old. We're too old. Unfortunately, we don't understand the way teenagers or young adults today, and we have to admit we're not that young anymore, actually express themselves. So let's not be conservative in thinking there's only one way of exp expressing ourselves. Just like we had debated a while ago about street art and graffiti, uh, and that was a topic of debate, topic of debate that we touched upon, uh, and, and it touched upon the notion of art Selfies are likewise a mode of expression. I'm not going to the art debate again, but just a mode of expression. Selfies, what do they mean? They mean, I was there. I took the time to go to this spot. That's how I feel when I come to such a memorial site, even if it's literally filtered. Or you actually may use photo filters. And yes, it may be very different. It may be that mode of expression very different from how others express themselves, especially other older people and other, how others may react. And what's interesting to me is that this is clearly a generational thing. It's not a cultural aspect. It's not a geographic bound aspect. I see this everywhere I go on the planet. Everyone who's very young takes a selfie wherever they are, right, in front of uh, uh, tsunamis, when there's like a, a wreck of uh, 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 houses and, and cars in Indonesia a few months ago. I remember there were teenagers taking also selfies just to say I was there, not to uh, make fun of uh, any uh, horrible situation. And the norm is, the norm, whether we like it or not, this social norm about selfies is that when you take a selfie, you have to be smiling. There is no selfie uh, that's worth its name where you're crying. It would not make sense for teenagers to do that. If you're, if you're smiling, it doesn't mean you're happy about what happened. Uh, or that you have not understood anything about the history of the site. It's only a communication norm. And norms evolve with time. So let's live with our times where we can see these norms evolving. And uh, it's true. Selfie takers, and I'll conclude with this for now, selfie takers may not take the time to understand the importance of some memorial sites or history. But who are we to judge them? Should we give a history te test to the entire population? Chances are, actually, selfie takers would know a little bit more, a little bit more than the average guy on the street because they went there. And I'm rather happy that they actually know a bit more than the average guy, even if they take a selfie, which some may found distasteful or disrespectful. Next up, Dirk. Let's hear his rebuttal. So if I understand your argument correctly, you're basically making an argument about a change in communication. So you practically t uh, tell me, hey, the youth is communicating through selfies. It's a social habit now that people document where they go. And selfies, believe it or not, are about smiling into the camera. That may be so. But some things in this world are not about me and how I usually behave. Some things in this world are more about others and and being respectful to others and having a memory, having an experience that may be off the beaten track. Now, while I may be perfectly fine to take pictures of my food in every restaurant I go and have a fun selfie with my friends in front of the Hollywood sign or whatnot, maybe it should be part of that social experience that I'm respectful of. Yes, maybe a different generation. It's not my parents that is in those graves but there are people around places like Auschwitz that literally lost their parents in the holocaust or their grandparents and that those who are not part of the selfie generation may feel really really awkward is something you probably will not disagree with so seeing somebody making a funny face in front of basically a graveyard may put people off that are immediately impacted by, by the memory of the Holocaust. So the respect towards those alone, I think, demands that you restrain yourself and maybe that your own social code needs some adjustment in places like this. Now, there is another aspect. Some places come with, let's say, a code of conduct 
a code of behavior. If you go into the church, you're not bringing your your uh, music box. If you go to the restroom, you're not you're not taking your selfie in front of that restroom. Uh, that certain places have a code of behavior. And what's wrong with having something like this code of behavior, those social contracts in place in places like Auschwitz, where we express our respect and express our dignity and maybe also express our will to really immerse ourselves in those, let's say, terrible moment of history a little bit more than usually by restraining ourselves and not taking that selfie. But instead, using the time we would use to figure out what post to make and what picture to take and what social media network to post this picture to in reflection and with the place and the history we experience. This is reason enough, if only for the respect of those who don't understand selfie culture. Now it's Sebastian's turn. Let's hear it. So you started off your first piece your first few arguments with a classic emotional tactic that I would usually use around showing the numbers of people who were killed. I don't think you needed to make that argument. And the reason for this is I, I don't disagree with you. It's there's it's just the scale of it is enormous. But even if only one person had died because they had been exterminated because of who they were uh, or what religion they, they believed in is already a problem. So just counting more bodies in fact makes it the studies which actually show this, I'm digressing here, I'm not talking about the debate, but um, studies showing that uh, we're less sensitive to numbers when it comes to people dying, even from horrible uh, methods, rather than individual stories. Just one story is much more vivid, just like the Syrian boy who was washed on the shore uh, a few years ago, and that really made the headlines. But back, back on topic, um, you mentioned that you should have your own social code of conduct, or sorry, your own social code should adapt to the circumstances in this site. But that's the thing. It's not your own social code. It's an entire social norm and communications norm that you live in. Right? It's millions, hundreds of millions of teenagers across the planet who have the same norm. So it becomes very diffi difficult as an individual to change the way that your mindset has been shaped. right? And that's despite what you like. It's just a convention. Uh, I, I rather think we should all evolve with, uh, with the norms. Uh, you mentioned a code of conduct uh, also, but here's the thing, and you mentioned the church or churches, uh, and I've seen this on other sites like in Greece in Athens, uh, the Greek historical sites, same thing. You're not supposed to take like, uh, you know, these jump shots, you jump like make like whatever these strange moves at it because it's not respectful to the, to the ancient sites, but I have a problem. It's double standards. In some sites, it's fine. In some other sites, it's not fine, right? Maybe in some concentration camps, you know, Auschwitz is maybe more sensitive but maybe in others, they're totally fine. And that's the problem, right, with these social norms. It's, like it's very difficult to establish a standard. There is no standard. It's very much a blurry lines. Where do you set the red line? Very, very difficult. I have a, a few more points I want to I make. I talked about uh, the fact that I, my hope, my guess, it's an assumption. I don't know if it's true. But my assumption is that selfie takers who go to these sites know more about the history or just a little bit more than people who actually don't go there on average. But what happens, uh, uh, what do you think happens after the selfie is taken? It's on Instagram. Maybe it's shown to friends, to family. It creates more awareness, if it were lacking in the first place, of what this memorial site was about. Even if you have all the tons of details and stories which are completely forgotten, it's just better than nothing to create this constant reminder of the horrible things that we human beings did to other human beings in the past. And I'd rather have this on Instagram and say, you know what, I went to Auschwitz and whatever the image is showing, but it will remind people what Auschwitz is. Some details will, will go through. Memor the memorial site of Auschwitz explains that selfies can offend, even if the site recognizes that it's probably not the intention of the selfie takers. And that's my problem here, and I'm, I'm going to make a, a more generic comment. Offending today seems to be the default reaction, the, the norm, to anything anyone disagrees with. Oh, you lack respect, then you must be offending me. I disagree with your way of taking photographs. And there's a distinction even further than that between offending and insulting, right? Insulting is, uh, uh, is, is a hostile act. The former is how some people perceive it, but not others. 
It's very loose in terms of definition. So because all these definitions are loose, because you cannot do anything against massive social norms and communication norms which change over time, I don't think there's any reason to ban what is in the in the trends of these days. And maybe it will change. Maybe in a few days, in a few years, in a few decades, we won't take selfies anymore. We'll have another way of expressing ourselves. Now it's Dirk's turn. A couple of things. You say people who go to places like Auschwitz know more about the history of the place than maybe the average other person on the street. I tend to disagree. You misunderstand how many people are actually made to visit that place. School classes, for, uh, for starters. And if they go on a rage, uh, who is taking the funnier picture without knowing the emotional and historical context, it's very easy to set people off. I've, while you were arguing, I actually looked for Auschwitz on Instagram. And first off, no, it's not necessarily a, a range of pictures where people smile into the camera. Um, so many of them are actually taking all seriousness. But here comes my other reason. You say ways to express yourself. Well, newsflash. Visiting places like Auschwitz is not about you. It's about everybody else. It's about Those who died there, those we should prevent on dying in similar events in the future. It's about learning. It's not about me documenting that I was standing in front of a sign I don't understand the historical significance of. So, if anything, I just think it may be better to restrain yourself because there are others involved because it's not about me and because there are way too many places already where we take silly pictures of ourselves. Call it a generational thing. I just call it dignity and respect. Sebastian. I think it is actually indeed about the people who go there. Uh, if you want it that way. And I don't think we're anyone to judge what's someone's intention to take a photograph. You can feel disrespected, but I would say grow up. Uh, I know it's hard to hear, but in this case, I think it is valuable that people actually go and visit that site. I have not gone to Auschwitz. Right? I should probably go. I should probably educate myself and see how it was. I'm interested in the, in the history of things. Maybe people are forced. It's true. Maybe they go with a school. Uh, but I think even though, even when you're forced, something remains in you. Maybe it will come back many, many years later. Even things that you didn't like to do, maybe because of school. In conclusion, it is a new communication norm that it's maybe difficult to understand when you're not part of that generation. Lines are very difficult, always very difficult to establish when it comes to humor, what means, what is respect, what is dignity. So I'd rather not define arbitrary lines when they're so difficult to define. And my final point, I'd really have people go there, whether forced or not, to know more about history. Let's not drive them away. Right, by banning things or making things more complicated than it is. Right, let's have more people visit these sites, if anything, and be more aware of the history and the significance of uh, those memorial sites. So let's please not ban taking photographs of any kind. I forced this debate motion on you because I read the article uh, on that topic in the French news media. French news uh, mm. recently, you were a bit uncomfortable initially because you thought there was not much con controversy around it. How do you feel now about this topic? What is your real stance? Um, my real stance is I, if I would be to decide for the Auschwitz Memorial site, for instance, um, what the picture policy should be, I probably wouldn't ban pictures all the way through. But I would probably ban certain types of pictures. For instance, you see people you, you see people posing under the entry of um, of Auschwitz and on, and on the rail tracks, and I might consider posting signs because that comes to the other point that you made. You said, "Hey, the standards are different." Yeah, because those places are different. Maybe maybe those places deserve. Uh, a specific rule set tailored to those places and in case of Auschwitz it would stop people from taking pictures in front of those doors uh, and those the, the, the main gate and in front of uh, and on the tracks because many of those pictures I'd argue are 
about either them telegraphing their cynical worldview, there, there are a lot of pictures that basically um, telegraph that, or about looking good in front of a building in the distance and having a really long track that you sit on. So I would probably have some rules, uh, ground rules established, and I would expect, especially in a modern selfie-centric and uh, communication on social media culture, I would also expect that people learn how to navigate rules of engagement around this because the more you have this the more places will show up that tell you yeah this over here you're not taking any picture but over there it's okay it's okay to not jump and but take a selfie if you must and i think our our young people are literate enough to do that so they can follow these rules if you explain it to them so i would I wouldn't ban them all the way through, but I would establish ground rules what is expected and what is respectful. And I would insist on on rules that avoid silly, fun pictures just for the laugh of it. Because those places are so monstrous in what they represent. I, I'd rather don't have pictures floating around in the world being seen by people who have no context whatsoever that basically telegraph, oh, it's a fun place to be. But that, that's my personal stance. Yeah. I, uh, my, well, my, my default reaction, the gut reaction is to be annoyed by these pictures. Uh, to be like, yeah, to be a little bit upset. Not shocked or offended. I, um, I, I would need more than that to be shocked by, by something. But I, my natural reaction is to be, a, to be annoyed. I'm right? like, oh, they're just morons. They're stupid. But then I also didn't lose anyone there, right? It may be completely different if you know that your granddad died there or something. Maybe, like that. maybe, maybe that's possible. So I guess, I, but let's take the emotions away. Like, and this in this case, we can do that because we didn't lose uh, relatives uh, in that concentration camp. But beyond my initial reaction, then I'm asking myself, like, what I what I try to bring up in this debate, which is which is how you define a red line. And it's very difficult. And it's, I, I'm not in general in favor of banning. And I think in, in several debates that we've had, I'm increasingly uncomfortable with establishing these kind of rules for things which are difficult to define. However, to your point, I think we can educate people. And the way to do this under the under the sign Arbeit macht frei, the gates of the yeah. concentration camp, maybe we can put signs and say, Please be respectful when you take photos. For instance, these kind of photos are not respectful, and we can explain why. Yeah. And actually, by, by doing this, you're not banning. If people want to do it, fine. Like they have the they have the information. If they do, it, they're really stupid, right? They're doing it on purpose. Fair enough. There's no point in blocking it. No, no point in suing them or whatever. But at least you put some education. Like people, because people are there and they will understand this. Maybe in other sites they go to, and they may think twice next time. So I'd rather have an education board exactly at that spot or the railroad because they have seen that on on instagram people are taking these kind of shots and and in and you're totally right and in fact i i carefully avoided talking about yoga poses or jumping shots or clown faces because i didn't want to get into this i was more talking about the selfies to avoid the specific cases of silly faces or jumping shots or or or, or changing the message of what the concentration camp gate um Banner was saying, well, meant initially, or how it was so cynical uh, by uh, by the regime. Um, anyway, so I, I would be really rather in that in that category of trying to educate people, and if they still do it, well, tough luck. Like, yeah, I I think in principle we in this case we we more or less agree on the principle. So I I wouldn't I wouldn't give it a a, a free reign. I would try to regulate it, but uh, to your point what do you do when people still do it well it's probably also not worth uh, um, I don't know punishing it or anything but uh, I I would also I would put up signs or, or hand out leaflets that explain some of the background in a way that people realize oh because that is what I, what I meant especially in a world where taking pictures is commonplace people understand if you get them uh, you give them a few behavior rules around taking pictures so they kind of expect that you cannot take the same kind of picture everywhere and as soon as you explain it to them 
they 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 usually know what what is meant and why and often it's a lack of context so when people take picture selfies of themselves in front of the gate it's uh, exactly as i said uh, often they just lack context but once they posted it it's out in the world even if they acquire the context later and uh yeah i I do feel as a collective we we sometimes do good in not letting every impulse reign free but uh, maybe also um trying to find a good way how we use our our ways to express ourselves i I mostly agree with what you're saying i just i just uh react uh negatively when you talk about regulation because i think we're it's it's pointless to try and regulate especially something which i really do consider is social slash communication norm and um or maybe it's just a trend by the way which may evolve into something else as i was hinting at uh, or maybe not maybe it's here to stay and it's just the way we we communicate from now on and and I think there's no point in trying to regulate a trend that is, that but it's is like, just sweeping everything. When I say regulate, I mean literally giving you ground rules. Um, it's Fair like, enough. you know, if you if you want to visit a church and there's a sign that tells you not to wear short, short uh, trousers, then you usually avoid wearing those um, out of respect towards the religious side. At least most people do. And I think it's good enough to to have the place where most people respect it, and only the the occasional exception who it des- decides to ignore the rule is the outlier. Um, but then then you basically have like a social regulation because others observing your behavior may just tell you, "Hey, didn't see that sign." please respect others here and that is good enough for me um, I'm not speaking about state law level regulation that can uh, um, <laughs> end no, you in jail. we did not talk about this but we talked about yeah. banning by the site which doesn't need to necessarily lead to criminal offense uh, we were uh, we're considering the case that, uh, of just banning well um, the other thing is some sometimes things are banned and no one ever really sues for it right so it's it's not literally punished uh, but uh, well it's not punished. about you know suing but you can be thrown out right you've paid for your museum ticket or whatever and you're supposed not to take photos for instance at all to protect yeah. you know the integrity of the paintings or whatever if you do it then you're thrown out they're not going to be a, a lawsuit against you but uh, the point is you know whether it's worth it or not in the case of paintings well there's an easy explanation right if you don't you don't use the flash or whatever in this case, it's about respect. And that's why it's, I think, that this is why we debate it and why it's open to controversy. Yeah, but when you initially uh, read the, the, the discussion, what what was your... I was curious. I, I read the article and I thought, well, I know my, what my gut reaction would be is what I said. Like, I would be annoyed, upset. Right? And I was like, oh, these stupid teenagers. Right? And, and I read the article and I had this point about the communication norm and I had neglected this aspect because I'm not part of that generation anymore, unfortunately. And I thought, yeah, maybe I need to think twice about it. And I thought, well, if I need to think twice, it's the typical reason why we debate because it's not a black or white answer. It's not obvious. And if you're by default shocked by this, then maybe think twice. And that's the point of our discussion today to help. And in general, of our debates for our listeners is to hopefully make our listeners also think twice about things. And you can still have the same position in the end, by the way. You may still think yeah. it's disrespectful and we should ban it, but at least you understand that it's not just teenagers, for instance, in this case, or young adults being on purpose disrespectful, right? They may have no intention whatsoever. Uh, it's just their way of behaving today. And we can educate, we can ban, we can do a range of things. And that's what we explore today. And it, I mean, the other interesting thought here that came across my mind is... Um or at least it was interesting to me. I'm not here to label my own thoughts as being interesting in general. <laughs> but the other thought we'll that we'll have cro- a debate about that. Yeah, the other thought that crossed my mind was it may be different in a couple of years, maybe a decade or two, because right now you could argue that Auschwitz is also a memorial site for the living. So there are literally Correct. people visiting the place that either have been there themselves or lost really close relatives there. Correct. Correct. And and so I would argue if 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 I if I compare the communication standard of somebody of that generation to the communication standard of the young generation, 
I would still say the older generation has a right to set the standard there because they were the more the the ones most impacted. In ten to twenty years, it's a memorial site out of memory and people for for the people living, but um, going there to be reminded. And then maybe their type of communication is the the, the dominant one. Then. The Holocaust, the, Je the Jewish genocide, I completely agree with you, is so present still in people's minds and still for another maybe one or two generations that it is, and we can see this in many topics, but right? it's still a very sensitive uh, aspect. Um, completely agree with you. I think that's a, a very good point. And maybe Auschwitz is an exception to the otherwise selfie taking habit, trend, communication norm that maybe may feel or sound more less offensive to people elsewhere for other sites which have less uh, symbolism or less strong symbolism yeah all right so our dear listeners you're free to vote what convinced you the most you can go to to debate.eu that's our website uh, where you get this podcast from and you can press thumbs up if you are convinced with Dirk's arguments or thumbs down if you think that I convinced you the most and stay tuned we'll have another debate published in just a week's time anything else to add it was a pleasure to debate with you as always thank you Sebastian likewise likewise um, alright thanks again and stay tuned bye 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 <laughs>